Good afternoon, Thornton Township, and welcome to this year's Black History Month celebration program. Uh, I am Dr. J. L. Weems, the Director of Youth and Family Services here at Thornton Township, and I am just delighted to uh, come to you, albeit virtually, uh, this year. This is the first time that we have tried this, uh, and hopefully that once we get through with this pandemic, we'll be able to uh, be back in our regular forms, whether it be South Suburban College or here at our Riverdale location to to host you and to fellowship and celebrate uh, Black History Month. But we are making all types of changes in how we do things. This uh, in some way has become a bit of a new norm uh, for us to uh, go remotely or go virtually uh, to still bring some programs and services that uh, I think will enrich uh, the lives of our residents. And so we thank you for being here. This is actually the 18th year, I believe, that we're doing a uh, Black History Month celebration. And so um, we welcome you. We're glad that you're uh, able to join us. Uh, we have a delightful uh, keynote speaker. I can't wait to uh, introduce uh, Pastor Fleshman to you guys. Uh, he is going to bring a word like no other. Uh, he's already told me in a, uh, you know, in an earlier meeting that he is ready uh, to bring that smoke. Uh, so I hope you are ready to uh, receive him. And you know, he is just uh, one of uh, our exceptional guests and luminaries that have been here. You know, over the years we've had the Pullman Porters that have been here, Dr. Margaret Burroughs, uh, Dr. Jamal Turner, um, Dr. Stan Howard, Dick Gregory, the Tuskegee Airmen, um, the the Pullman Porters. Uh, we've we've had just a lot of exceptional people. Uh, Roland Martin uh, has been here uh, for our programs, and so uh, Pastor Fleshman uh, is going to be walking in those shoes, but most certainly going to be creating his own path, and we're going to add him uh, to that list. And so, uh, as usual, I'm going to keep my comments to a minimum, but I did want to open up the program and just to welcome you guys to this year's program. Uh, and I did want to share something with you. I read something uh, on LinkedIn uh, the other day, and I thought it was important, especially in light of what we're seeing and what the culture is like in today's and contemporary society. Uh, and what the climate has been like for us. So I want to share this with you guys. And it, it begged the question of why is uh, Black History Month celebration important and whether or not it's racist. Uh, and I thought that this response was spot on. And so I'd like to read that to you. Now let me pull it up. So the question is, and I mind you, this is, I don't have, this is not mine. Uh, I, I did not author this. Uh, and I'm not sure who did, but I think you'll find value in it. Isn't celebrating black history success racist? People ask, why do black people celebrate black success? Isn't that racist? Shouldn't they just celebrate all success without bias or favor? Why do they keep banging on about it? Black people make a big deal about black success and progress in white spaces in the context of the unfortunate history for the same reason people celebrate, for example, Jamaican or American Independence Day, and when people celebrate when a lost child is found or a submarine are rescued from the deep or miners are rescued from a mining disaster or an abused child becomes somebody against all the odds, or a soldier returns unscathed from the heat of the battle, or women make gains, or a shepherd finds a lost sheep, or the prodigal son returns. Overcoming seemingly insurmountable or very stubborn hurdles is cause for special celebration. When you've been told you can't make it or that you don't belong here, and that you should know your place. Breaking through is cause for special celebration. Thriving in times 
of in, 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 in inhospitable spaces is cause for continuing celebration. So that is primarily why we are celebrating Black History Month. As I've said over the years, black history is American history and it's cause for celebration. Thank you all for joining. Hope you enjoy the rest of the program. from bloody marches and bite mark flesh and sweat and tears from yesterday's gathering. Holds down dreams and locked away futures. Laws passed to pinch my humanity, designing my presence presented with emptiness because they never planned on gift wrapping hope. I come from willow trees inscribed on backs sealed with pain stories, refusal of an apology. Civil setbacks built on train tracks, but they claim fact of their superiority. Brainwashed with Willie. Lynched with letters written of containing the slave, and now we can't see its destruction. That's unfortunate. I come from renaming my worth, auctioning right after birth, unearthing existence since I'm only three-fifths of this nation that I built with my dreams to escape underground so that Lavia won't have to be ripped out and put on display. I come from lives stolen from pierced bullets, turned brown skin red, burnt flesh above logs, while twigs dangled breathless skin. A kid who barely began to live where words are taken from mouths meant to speak and futures are carved in death leaving families to worry and mourn. Someone thought my life wasn't worth their time and his life was worth stealing. I come from beauty turned undesirable, tight curls turned straight, lips and hips full of curves called obese and pigmentation faded to clouds. America the beautiful doesn't resemble me. I come from untraceable genes, unknown last names, stripped of proud meanings and converted into this. Lost, outside of steel bars futures, covered in confusion, putting bodies into coffins, turning grief into an everyday occurrence, lacking assurance when it comes to tomorrow. We want to live past 25. I come from strength unimaginable pain unbearable 
psyche destroyed, and yet I am here. I come from an ancestry of resilience. Vice President Kamala Harris. Harris was elected after a lifetime of public service, having been elected District Attorney of San Francisco, California Attorney General, and a United States Senator. Born in Oakland, her parents immigrated from India and Jamaica. She is the first African-American Vice President of the United States. Dorothy Height. Height is an American civil and women's rights activist. She is widely respected and influential leader of organizations that focus primarily on improving opportunities for African-American women. President Bill Clinton awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Diane Durham. Durham was the first African-American woman to win a U.S. Gymnastics National Championship. She was a pioneer in American gymnastics. Her victory in the all-around at the 1983 National Championships as a teenager was the first by an African-American woman in the organization's history. Robert Abbott. Born just five years after the end of the Civil War, Abbott founded a weekly newspaper called the Chicago Defender which was one of the most important African-American newspapers in the history of America in 1905. The success of the Chicago Defender made Abbott one of the nation's most prominent post-slavery African-American millionaires. Tony Weaver, founder and CEO of Weird Enough Productions, Weaver works to correct the misrepresentation of young men of color in media. A Forbes 30 Under 30 winner, Weaver's short films and web comics have been making waves in media as he tries to combat the negative public perceptions that can lead to economic disadvantage, police aggression, and a distorted sense of Black achievement. Younger self couldn't comprehend suffocating curls or patches that didn't tangle with comb. It didn't waterfall like Pietra's or Sophia's or Esme's. Mornings consisted of mirroring, eyeballing and scorning, looking for a miracle in Jam's hair gel. I would slap half the jar on disgrace, hoping recipe could transform beast into beauty. <laughs> Instead, Shame levitated like ancestral whispers from the grave, throwing a five-year-old tantrum. No one is supposed to look like this. I used to ask why they could swim in oceans. No swimming cap, hair don't turn back, no tender-headed nightmares later, no shrinkage, no inches of hair collected in comb like the 
beginnings of a collage art project. I get it. Chlorine and black don't mix. You can add that to the list of unworthiness. I hated days when mama used to wrap me up with the threats of a wooden brush to the back of neck. It was one of my many worst nightmares right next to the flesh burnt flesh on ear or forehead. Mama just wanted to transform my ancestry into white royalty. Take traces of Africa and play hide and go seek to keep dignity intact. <laughs> After a while, my iron coils, rusted and burnt, were flaky from impersonating genetics I did not inherit. Now, I know not to force European proper on locks or think mainstream is synonymous with the spirits that carried away my history again. Charles Brown. Charles Brown became the first African American to lead any branch of the American Armed Forces. Appointed under former President Barack Obama, he became the first African American Chief of the Air Force. Calm, collected, and highly regarded by peers, Commander Brown fearlessly spoke out against the killings of Michael Brown and George Floyd. Ida B. Wells. Ida Wells, born in slavery in Mississippi, she moved to Chicago where she wrote as an investigative journalist for a headlight newspaper. She publicly criticized Jim Crow laws and lynching in the South, and because of her outspokenness, the U.S. government placed her under surveillance. Despite this, she continued to be a lifelong crusader against racial injustice across the country. Jamal Cole. Jamal Cole is the founder of My Block, My Hood, My City in Chicago. The organization provides opportunities for underprivileged children and teens to experience the world in different kinds of ways. Cole is an advocate for change within the educational system in Chicago, as well as improving community outreach within the city. Lonnie Johnson. Johnson is an American inventor aerospace engineer and entrepreneur whose work history includes a U.S. Air Force term of service and a 12-year stint at NASA. He invented the Super Soaker water gun in 1990, which has been among the world's best-selling toys ever since. Bubba Wallace. Blazing the trails of first, Bubba Wallace became the first African-American to win Rookie of the Year in a NASCAR series. Wallace also was the highest finishing African-American driver in the Daytona 500, taking second place for the race. He has also been a champion for cultural equality. My intuition let me know that I was missing something. Something important. Something I didn't even know existed. A bond. Some story I could dive into and witness my reflection ripped open, radiant, and drowning. Something real. Addiction as curly as my hair. Combined consonants only I could comprehend a representation, an exhaustion, an emotionally drained month and a half of rehearsals understanding the words weren't just a language shoved into my mouth. The vowels were air, a battle, trying to comprehend the rumble in my bones every time I stepped foot outside of my house. Knowing the dead weight this mask carried across the stage was truth rubbing hard against everything I knew and pulling me against everything I didn't. The joy in jump roping, 
singing songs my tongue hadn't floated across since I believed in the tooth fairy. The dancing to release the predatory response men believed they were entitled to and knowing I didn't need any more apologies. A dance with women who understood the complexity of our sexuality, the forgiveness and buoyancy in our skin, and the constant battle to love even ourselves. We knew this story all too well, but we were missing the importance of visibility, of freedom. We were missing the opportunity to be whole. And we are, you know, whole. We were missing something. And Intozaki Shange found it. And then some girl said, is the one call for white girls. An ex-friend, 2014. For other girls who don't believe colored girls deserve the rainbow. For the club I didn't ask to be invited to, but found to be home. For the theater department that never had an all black cast until 2009. For my tears acknowledged and shape shifted into productions. For the blue lights on black girls. For the nude anything I was supposed to wear. For the comb too fine to untangle me. For the smoke alarms in Murner Hall when my hair rejected flat irons. For the swastikas, the hangmen, and the nooses. For the amount of times they wanted to call me a nigger. And for the amount of times they did. And for the amount of times there weren't any repercussions. For the meeting when my mama apparently gave birth to a ghost for the explanations of the new diversity committee, for the count on one hand of the professors of color, for the lost count of the custodial staff's key Swahili whispers, for the time a volcano erupted from my mouth, for the stories I was forced to digest without entry, for the television soiled fingerprints of the Atlantic, for my tongue twisting round Columbus, for the chitlins seared into my nostrils, for my nine double dutch whelps, for these hits juking way before Becky or Miley, for the repetition rumbled underneath these bones, for my protection against fear, for the tremors my body couldn't silence after Sandra Bland, for the rainbow buried underneath Chicago smog, for my transformation, my humanization, my refuge for birth. Good morning. My name is Pastor William H. Fleshman. I am the proud pastor of Abundant Living Christian Center located in the village of Dalton at 14540 Lincoln Avenue. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, to Supervisor Frank Zuccarelli for an opportunity uh, such as this. I am, I am totally humbled and honored. I also want to thank uh, my mentor, uh, Dr. Jerry Weems, uh, for allowing and encouraging me to take advantage of this opportunity. And then most of all, I want to invite all of you that are watching uh, this Black History program, I want to invite you in to uh, uh, take a seat and, and sit back and relax and enjoy uh, what we have in store for you. It was over 53 years ago that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke to the students and the staff of Garrett Junior High School in Philadelphia. At that point, Dr. King told them that he had three points, three points in which could build a strong blueprint. And so today we're going to just share two of his points but the blueprint being that which serves as a model, a pattern, a guide, a mark, the basis, or, or the base of which something will be erected. Dr. King said that your blueprint must be a very strong blueprint. Today, however, we find ourselves in a place where we've never been. We find ourselves mourning for the loss of over 500,000 Americans and 
praying for safety and we're wearing masks in public and so things are different and we're, we're asking ourselves will we ever experience the normalcy that we once knew will it come back again and so when dr king delivered his what is your life's blueprint speech he, he was giving us a draft a, a draft uh, for a future time such as this uh, so that we could reestablish a strong and, and solid blueprint uh, in a time when things are uncertain, in a time where providing for your family is difficult, in a time where there is no regard for black life, even from black people, in a time where struggles seem as if they are intensifying, we are reminded of a strong and solid blueprint. The first point, and I state, that Dr. King shared was it, it is to have a deep belief in your own dignity. You must believe in your own worth and your somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel like you're a nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. Always feel that your life has ultimate significance. And Dr. King reminded the students and the staff not to be ashamed of being black, mm -hmm. not to be ashamed and know that your life has value, but it's up to you to add value to your life on a day-to-day -day basis. Be proud of who you are, and just because you're proud of who you are, it does not make you a racist, but it does establish culture in your community. Even in these uncertain times, we are now witnessing the changing of the guard and many people would not expect for things like this to be happening, but we've gone from Mike Pence as vice president to Camila Harris as vice president. We've gone from Mike Madigan as the speaker of the house to Emmanuel Welch as the speaker of the house. We're now living in a time and a season that is ripe for black America to advance. We have seen red states turn to blue states. Just yesterday in the very village of Dalton, which is a part of our great township, we witnessed the first female mayor being elected in the village of Dalton by the way of Sister Tiffany Henyard. A story about the black experience, Soul of a Nation, will air nationally on next week. What more, though, do we need to see as black people? What more do we need to hear as black people so that we can really advance? What more needs to be demonstrated? Who else needs to validate black America before we can advance? What more do we need to see? Black America must validate black America. We must share and demonstrate our truths and our value and what better time than right now? Dr. King's second point in this blueprint speech and I state was, you must have a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. I wanna say that just one more time because it's super important that we understand this basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields or endeavor. See, oftentimes we don't know what we ought to be doing or how we ought to be doing it. But whatever your gift is, whatever it is that comes easy to you, that God shares with you and he's giving unto you to do, I wanna encourage you to move forward like you've never moved forward before. You must have this basic principle of excellence always at the forefront. He said, whatever your possession is, do it with the grace in which God gifted you. Give your all. Be the very best. It is through dedication that one attains the invaluable reward of self-realization. Self now, now, Pastor, what is this self-realization? This self-realization is what will allow black America to be truthful with black America. This self-realization is what will stop 
black crimes happening by black people in our communities. This self-realization will bring us into a place where we will be able to share the truth with one another and not just share the truth because it's not just about sharing the truth, it's about being able to receive the truth. Dr. King stated that if it falls to your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep the streets like Mac Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep the streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep the streets so well that all heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great sweep, a street sweeper who swept his job well. Whatever you do, do it in excellence and with excellence. We don't need to look that far though, however, to see that the history of intolerance and hate is not a distant history. We don't have to look back far. We, we can look back just a few days ago and we can still see the disparities of our history. White supremacists and other bigots have felt empowered by the previous administration to take to the streets and act on their prejudice and not their pride. God has allowed for the disparities though against black America to be highlighted again not to hold us down or to keep us as hostages to our past, but to further empower us to pick up the pace in our advancement. Mm -hmm. In closing, we must become spiritually enriched. We must understand that we are fitly joined together so that we can function properly. We must yield ourselves to God and it does not matter how you address your God. It does not matter who you call your God, but we do know that there is only one God. And, and this is key because we must collaborate. We must come together. We must break uh, all boundaries or come against all boundaries that hold us apart. We must come against those things that, that seem to uh, bring about negative thoughts and those things that are continuing to really lynch our minds. We must rally together. We must build together. We must educate together. We must support one another. It does not matter what generation you are a part of, you must understand that you still play a significant role today, just as significant as you did in years past. The struggle for social, social justice is ongoing. And with this blueprint, we can keep moving forward. And he states at the end of his speech, he says we must keep moving forward. We must keep going. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't crawl, then, then by any means, keep moving. But never forget the blueprint that Dr. King left for us. Now is the time for black America to advance. But our advancement will only come when we collaborate and unify and then we will begin to see a collector, collective movement of people of color. And so again, don't forget, keep your movement. Stay to the pace. Stay to the program. Stick to whatever it is that God has gifted you in. Now is the most opportune time for black America. And let us take advantage of what is in front of us. And never forget, the blueprint belongs to you. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this year's virtual Black History Month program. I hope you were inspired by the encouraging words of our speakers, the wonderful singing, the spoken word that talks about not only our previous struggles, but how we've overcome and surpassed them. We really wish that obviously we could all be together in one room. But as you know with the pandemic, it has hit the community very hard. There's, there's a reason why we didn't have an official theme for our Black History Month this year. Because where do you start when it comes to the past year? As I mentioned, the pandemic hit very hard throughout the entire United States, but it definitely hit um, disproportionately African-American communities for several reasons. 
you have to deal with the food desert as well as the lack of hospitals and clinics in our area, which also deals with some of the issues when people need to find services. Then you dealt with this, the words protect and serve and how it can mean different things to different communities and how people marched to talk about how that word should mean the same for everybody and we should all be treated well. Then you're dealing with obviously economic and the financial issues that we're having to deal with. A lot of times African Americans were some of the essential workers and didn't have the options to work from home. And they had to be in the midst of the pandemic. And that's also some of the reasons why those rates went higher. And also every year in February, we talk about how the importance of black history being American history. How many black people built the foundation of what we live in the United States. And sometimes that's too often not appreciated. And how we have failed to truly integrate black history into American history, where it should be a 12-month discussion instead of simply one month. But as we dealt with that struggle, the one good thing about our African-American community is that we have found countless ways to rise up. How we have, through many, many forms, figured out ways to really be a backbone of society. And we really hope that as seeing some of the performances and the words and just the stories that you hear have helped people understand that once again there are so many ways that we are similar and different. We can't let people, whether it's um, our politicians or our neighbors, divide us. We have all gone through many struggles this year. We've dealt with the pandemic and isolationism We've all dealt with mental health issues. We've all dealt with financial issues. We all want to be closer to our families. And in putting that together, we understand that in order for society to really, truly be at the highest level, we have to stop the divide and stop focusing on things that aren't essential. Someone's skin color is probably the least important and the least interesting thing about them. But too often, that's the number one thing we focus on. So I hope that you took this time to not only enjoy the performances, but really embrace the lessons that are learned. And hopefully next year we can all come together and be in one room and really connect in the way that we've been missing in 2020, as well as some of the early parts of 2021. We want to say God bless, take care, and our supervisor, Frank Zuccarelli, always has a motto of people working with people because he understands the importance of when we work together as a group, we all rise up together.